Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. I hope you have enjoyed the 14 episodes that we did on Star Wars Squadrons going through the entire story mode of the game. Today on our final review we're going to talk about to have, uh, 7 top takeaways from the game. And we'll treat this like we do a breakdown episode of The Mandalorian, for example. So we'll start with our first takeaway, which is just a general wrap-up of the story itself. So the story involves this Project Starhawk, which is mysterious at first, but then we find out it is the prototype for a new class of battleship that the New Republic wants to field to help defeat the Empire once and for all. Yes, they had a great victory at the Battle of Endor, but there's still a lot of fighting left to do, and they think this new kind of battlecruiser will help them in the fight. Meanwhile, the Empire gets wind of this thing and they decide that they've got to take it out. And so you alternate between the perspectives of the New Republic and the Empire between defending the Starhawk and trying to destroy the Starhawk. That's the conflict on the macro level. On the micro level, so to speak, the conflict is very much set up between Lyndon Javes, who is leading the New Republic forces that you're working with, and Teresa Carell, who is leading the Empire forces that you're working with. We get a wonderful prologue that sets up why they will become adversaries when Lyndon Javes decides that he can't be a party to a massacre of refugees from Alderaan. And then that betrayal is seen by Teresa Carell as just unforgivable, and so, Four years later, after the Battle of Endor, they find themselves coming face-to-face, -face, so to speak, in their operations as they try to protect or destroy the Starhawk. And that leads me to my second takeaway, which is about the characters that we meet in the game. They are very well fleshed out, although perhaps the way that they're fleshed out and the delivery of that information is a little bit... Uh, awkward is not exactly the word I'm looking for. Like, it's basically just, okay, you get to press a button and listen to these characters monologue for a little bit. And that's fine. The scenes are well acted, the, the information is delivered in a compelling way, and the backstories for the characters that you meet either you know, Teresa Carell and her Lobot guy, or Lyndon Javes and Ardo, the fleet intelligence officer, or any of the pilots in Vanguard Squadron and Titan Squadron. Like, all of them have very interesting backstories and are well fleshed out. And you even get to have interactions with some bigwig characters like Harrison Dula and Ray Sloan. That's very cool also. For a third takeaway, I'll talk about the New Republic and how we see them in the midst of the game. They are in a bit of a transitory state at this time in Star Wars storytelling. Between 4 ABY and 5 ABY, they're evolving from the Alliance to Restore the Republic to becoming the New Republic, and they're using that name, the New Republic, but the activities that they're doing are still very rebel-like, very scrappy. You're not seeing them operate with the authority of a government, for example. You're seeing them operating on the front lines of a military campaign. And even though they've adopted this New Republic idea, that's you know not entirely who they are. There are references to Chandrila and Hosnian Prime and Mon Cala, which are very important planets and systems within the New Republic. And certainly leadership for the New Republic is well placed on those planets so involving them definitely gives you sort of the imprimatur of a you know more stable successful role in the galaxy and yet that gets undermined pretty quickly in a couple of cases because of the missions that the empire part of the game runs at Hosnian Prime and at Mon Cala. For a fourth takeaway we'll talk about the empire as we find it in the game. The Aftermath of the Battle of Endor is pretty shocking for everybody in the Empire, and yet for the characters that you play as in Titan Squadron, they're pretty much still dedicated to the Imperial cause. They are following Admiral Ray Sloan, who is one of the you know, few people to rise up and potentially challenge for leadership of the Empire in a very credible way. And so the missions that you run as part of the Empire definitely also have that high stamp of approval, so to speak. But there's also acknowledgement from multiple quarters about how the death of the Emperor and Darth Vader and the destruction of the second Death Star has created a number of warring factions within the Empire. It even affects one of the missions that you fly in the game where you, in the Empire side of the game, 
end up jumping into an Imperial sector where this colonel at a munitions depot says, well, the Emperor gave me this assignment, so, you know, Admiral Sloan isn't here, I outrank you, Captain Corell, you now work for me. And Corell is having none of that, so they protect that munitions depot from a rebel attack or a New Republic attack, <laughs> depending on your point of view. They are pretty staunch in saying, yeah, we're not calling them the New Republic, we're calling them the rebels. But at the same time, they also decide to steal a bunch of stuff from the munitions depot, too. For a fifth takeaway, I'll talk about a couple of things that yeah, didn't quite add up for me. And basically it's limited to the end game of the game, so to speak. When the Empire finally arrives at the Nadiri dockyards and has the opportunity to take out the Starhawk, and the way that the Empire rationalizes what it decides to do for its missions, and the way that the New Republic rationalizes what they're going to do, the story logic seemed to fall apart for me. And we talked about this in previous episodes where it's sort of a question of is this a plot hole or is it that you know characters are acting with incomplete information and so they are fallible and will not make the smartest decisions in a given situation? For a sixth thing, I'll just flag a couple of things that we didn't talk about in our discussion of the story mode. And why would we? Because <laughs> there's also a multiplayer aspect to the game, which I've heard is good, if not limited, and the VR experience of it, which I've heard is absolutely spectacular. And for our seventh and final takeaway, just the final verdict of it, is that I really did enjoy it. I thought the story mode was very well done. I thought the visuals for the game were very well done. The way that things played out within missions was also excellently executed. The visuals were extraordinary, and the changes in missions in some cases when things didn't go according to what the initial plan was, I thought those were very fun. And I gotta say though, there's one other thing that I wish had happened, which is that Vanguard and Titan would have actually flown against each other. So there are situations where you know you play as Vanguard and then you switch to Titan, and Titan is dealing with the aftermath of something Vanguard did, or vice versa. But there's no situation where as Vanguard you are flying up against Titan Squadron fighters and vice versa. And that's, you know, a bit of a bummer too. But overall, I really enjoyed the story and I hope that you enjoyed it too as I shared it with you if you haven't played the game. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. If you enjoy the podcast, whether it's these story mode recaps of video games or any of the other content that we do seven days a week, then I hope you will consider sharing the podcast with friends that you know that like Star Wars, following and subscribing and joining, depending on what the app you use calls it. And also, I hope you'll consider leaving a rating or review on your favorite app that really does help more people find the show. And it just remains for me to say, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the podcast. As always, and may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.